to have these guys. I absolutely love them just as much, if not more, than you guys. My name is Emily Lomaretta. I am an editor for HollywoodLife.com, and before I bring them out, I'm going to show a little bit of what we can expect here from our two favorite guys. like being a shared experience. I like to think of it as having the, the, chi the, the, the child's sensibility is always in my mind when I'm working. Always. So when, I, when, I'm, when I'm inhabiting Patrick, I'm inhabiting a, a seven-year-old is what I think. I just, that's, that's the kind of wonderful kind of therapeutic uh, immersion. I'm yeah, and I mean that's one of the great uh, uh, you know perks of our job is that you get to live in the head of like these young naive characters for a little while you know and then and then you have to go back to the adult world of uh, you know parenting and mortgages and worry and oh, it's so stupid <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an escape that i think most people don't get within their job you know so, so we feel really lucky to have this job where you could just kind of ride around in the heads of these uh of, of these characters that are just so guileless and and sweet and funny, and SpongeBob and Patrick uh, really like each other. You know, Bill and I really like each other, which it helps. And, yeah. and uh, <laughs> so it's uh, so it's really uh, you know, in terms of the the, the content, um, it's really just uh, I don't know that there's ever an effort to put overtly adult stuff on purpose into the show, but I think it's just writers trying to do stuff that they think is funny and that yeah. makes them laugh. They're just trying to make them each other laugh. And uh, yeah, well, yeah. And I think and they're really strange people. Microphone. <laughs> <laughs> they're so weird. <laughs> they're awesome dudes. They're incredibly talented. They are. They I are. Don't, we don't have a woman on it. We've never had a woman. On yes, we have. We have. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they are. You know, I think that the. the Mission is always that SpongeBob is a kids show on a kids network, and it's always been that. 
But, you know, I guess like Looney Tunes or Bullwinkle or all, all those kind of cartoons that, that we and the writers uh, revere, you try to put stuff in that makes you laugh and it maybe works yes. on all levels. But, but we always know that it's mostly, uh, it, you know, it's kids that are watching the show or people that think like kids. When you, yeah, when you, when you turn onto the street of, oh, what will kids like? Uh, it's so easy to become condescending and kind of detached from what you're actually writing. And, and, and we've all have watched stuff with our kids, those, I'm talking to the uh, parents in the audience, and, and the stuff's, uh, you know, it's really hard to sit through because there, there isn't a, a connection between the people that are writing it and what you're seeing. It's like some, it's, it's almost contemptuous. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think you're right. It's like yeah, kids, right. you know, you got to give kids credit for being as like as imaginative as, if not more, yeah. as any executive or, or, or anybody like that or any yeah. a, any human. You know, they're, you know, yeah. kids have these crazy imaginations with no limitations. Yeah, it's on, a, it's on a, it, a and it's challenge. Like, that's what we're trying to yeah. tap. We're, we're trying to be like them. You know, course, the writers yeah. are trying to, to trying to capture that. Mm -hmm. Wave, you know, and it's it's uh, it, it, it's kind of metaphysical, you know. It's very uh, it's it's very mystical. Yeah, well, it, it's a, it's a weird mix of like math and magic, you know. Oh, I like that. I, like that. I think I wish I was more imaginative like that. I think I guess. Right yeah. brain, left brain. And right. we and we've been doing this for so long now that. I, uh, you know, I, I typically, with most uh, episodes we record, I have a really clear sense of the potential visual that's going to be happening, a link between the words and the moments and the uh, character intentions and what, what these guys are going to animate, you know? So that helps you, that helps you fulfill the performance, the vocal performance, because you have a clear sense of where they're going with the visual instead of just being this, well, I saw the storyboard, so I think it might be this, but, you know, I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, generally we go off a storyboard. They have a storyboard for us with the pictures in the panel so you know what the action's going to be and you can look at all the extreme poses and, and try to chase that and maybe plus it a little bit. Uh -huh. And that's one of the great things, you know, one of the most fun things about our job you know, as opposed to doing anime or something, where uh, they animate to our voice tracks. Right. You know, so what we lay down is what the artists draw to, as opposed to anime where it's already done and you're just kind of doing this Rubik's Cube of making your line fit the mouth movement, you know, of some guy who already did the performance. It's and really hard. Yeah, it's, yeah they're, both, they're both rewarding and interesting and fun in their own way, but, but, but there's something you just that's just a blast. It's like it's like you know. I mean, we're like dogs that are in a dog park. You know, on Wednesdays when we record, <laughs> they just let us off the leash and we're like. <laughs> no, we don't do that. But, but it's uh, there's no butt sniffing. But but uh, other than that, we're like dogs in the in the dog park. <laughs> How often does it happen to you guys in your normal life that you know? your wife is talking to you or your family members are talking to you and that other voice just comes out and you're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Someone asked me, uh, was asking me once if I ever uh, talk like Patrick around the house and I said, well, no. And my oldest daughter at the time was about 10 and she goes, Dad, whenever you see a spider around the house, you go, spider, spider, spider. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't even, I, I, I didn't know I did that. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, it's funny, these characters, that stuff does come out. It's not like you're trying to, like, be zany for your family who are so over you already. <laughs> it's like, hey, look at me. Yeah. I'm the funny guy that's been around your whole life. <laughs> I'm not irritating, am I? You know, but uh, they, uh, these characters do kind of, like, you know, become part of your... DNA, like it's got, you know, it's like, I, I said to somebody yesterday, they're like, is there some of you in Spongebob and some of Spongebob and you? And I said, I never thought of it like that, but it is kind of like a Jeff Goldblum fly movie, you know, where you're like, yeah. <laughs> some, some, some peripheral DNA and some starfish DNA, like over the years, it just seeped into us. So yeah, it kind of comes out, we're like, we're like a Monsanto corn or something, you know, <laughs> it's weird. I can't wait to see you in the home. <laughs> Should be any day now. <laughs> Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy and us. <laughs> Shady Shoals. I love it, I love it. So, okay, last year I was on a cruise and I saw a kid's theme park that was all covered in SpongeBob everything. Where is the strangest place you guys have seen your characters? 
Oh, boy. <laughs> well, well, I have people looking at the children in the audience. <laughs> How truthful should I be? <laughs> I, I did, we did send a picture of a, a guy's butts yesterday with tattoos. They, like three guys had a hair or something. You know, like yeah. SpongeBob tattoos. Yeah, so that, that, was, that was just yesterday. <laughs> A guy, a, 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 a guy walked up to our table. He's probably in here. With a, yeah, he might be here. I don't know. I, I, I'm not good with faces, but I, 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 I never forget a butt. But, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he walks up with a manila envelope, and it's, he takes it out, and it's a picture of just, just the posteriors of three men side by side, and he said, oh, my friend got married, and we had a bachelor party, and we all got SpongeBob tattoos on our butts. SpongeBob, one got Gary, one got Patrick, and then they all got, in really girly writing, friends forever. <laughs> to put, did you see my butt? <laughs> After the guy walked away, I go, Bill, I hope you wrote, did you see my butt? Because that's, like, that's the only time you'll ever get to, to write that, and it'll be so perfect. It goes, oh! <laughs> Next time. Oh, God. So, anyway, yeah, the guy was very nice. Awesome. That is well, really well, I, We exchange I, wisecracks. No, I, I get... Oh. <laughs> Good one, dude. I get pictures from people who are traveling around the world and they're like, oh, I was in Tunisia and here's a this SpongeBob water slide. Or some someplace in Central America, they'll be like, just like some local guy painted, you know, our characters on his mm -hmm. taco stand or something. Yeah, yeah, like like off model, like uh, you know, un, un, unlicensed stuff, which is the best. You know what I mean? It's funny. It looks kind of weird. His eyes are too small. Like, you know, some crazy pinata or something like South of the Border. That's like our favorite stuff. And Steve Hillenberg, the creator of the show. He doesn't have any SpongeBob merchandise, like at all. Like he gives it all away, you know. He doesn't care. But he collects bad off models. <laughs> right, right. And you know, yeah, that's crazy. Where you sit, where you sit like that. Like, like somebody will send me a picture. To, it was Tunisia uh, with uh, a Muslim uh, girl. Like it was a girls' school, and all these uh, Muslim girls, like fully covered burkas, everything, coming out of school, and one of them had a, like a SpongeBob backpack on. Wow. You know what I mean? It was like, it was like that's yeah. worlds colliding. And then yeah. on the streets of Rome, um, my family and I went to Italy uh, 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 a couple of years ago. And on the streets of Rome, there was a guy selling these handmade, hand modeled, I don't know if I've ever showed you this, uh, little figures of, uh, well, there was SpongeBob, Spider Man, you know, various people like that. But it, they were, it was all characters dropping trowel and little poos. Uh, and they were like beautifully hand painted, and SpongeBob's poo was yellow, and Spider-Man's poo was red with like webbing on it, you know? And, and so, so I just bought a whole bunch of the SpongeBob ones, you know? And, and, and it's, it's about this big, and, 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 and it's just like SpongeBob like, with a big smile, but, but, but his pants are down, and there's a little yellow pile uh, on the face. And, and uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. I, anything that would freak Nickelodeon out, we love. <laughs> a ton of guest stars do voiceovers on the show. Oh, yeah. and, you know, anyone that you can think of has been on. Mark Hamill has done a guest a voiceover. I know Chris Elliott, who was on How I Met Your Mother with you, he did a voiceover. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. We spooned on it. It was a, it was a great moment. <laughs> Is there anyone that you guys, from maybe from a past project you've done, Bob Odenkirk could show up. If, you know, someone could show up from your past. Is there someone you guys would love to have come on and do a voiceover? Oh, so not our favorite ones, but like uh, people who have Dream not done ones, it. Yet. Yeah. Wow, wow. That's like that's really hardcore. It'd be great to get someone like Robert Duvall or Gene oh, Wilder. Yeah, so, yeah, that would be good. You know, Gene Wilder would be awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know how his health is, but Chino, <laughs> something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, like the good, you know, SpongeBob is. In the beginning, it used to be hard to get celebrities to do it, you know, because 
you know, it's not, it's not a gigantic paycheck for these guys. And, <laughs> you know, they're, 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 yeah, it's like, but now people want to do it. So, of course. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's fun. and I voice direct the show now. Like I'm the voice director as yeah, an he's our director. Tom Kenny is our star. He is our in session director. That that means he runs the recording session, and it's it's just wonderful because obviously who knows you know the show better than Tom. Uh, you know, so it's really made a great difference in the show. You, you wait, our new episodes will start coming out. <laughs> like, It'll be great. There's not a whole lot of directing to be done. Now, Patrick, uh, you know, Bill, let me tell you a little bit about Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's kind of dumb. He's just kind of lives under a rock. <laughs> yeah, these, these guys know their characters. Their characters are a comfortable old slipper that they can, uh, that they love, a, 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 a beloved old slipper that you can take on and off as you want. But, but um, so I've gotten to direct some cool people just lately, like, you know, Betty White, you know, who's totally spicy. Totally spicy, like, I can't believe she just said that. Oh my god. And she knows the effect that will have. She'll just say something in your ear and you go, Betty. <laughs> uh, Bob Barker, you know, just on the show. It's like, you know, I, I like weird celebrities like that, like legendary game show hosts. Like, those are those are bigger to me than movie stars. Like, in oh, uh, John Hamm just came in. And, and, oh, and, that's right, so and unlike a lot, a lot of the bigger names, like your Johnny Depps and David Bowie's and such, they like to record by themselves, right? Ham came in with us, and he did the session with all of us, which was really Oh, that's cool. awesome. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times they're in some right. castle in France doing it over the phone, you know? I have one of my castles uh, ready to get Oh, it's him, you know, let's start recording, which is not as fun. But John Ham from, from Mad Men, obviously, uh, I'm not, not sure kids are, are that familiar with it, but he uh, he was so down to earth, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, he was lovely. It was cool. That was a weird thing, because I, I pulled up to Nickelodeon, and I walked up to the gate, and here's this guy with a baseball hat on and you know, just kind of like looking around, like looking at the address, like looking for the street address. And I'm like, oh, I wonder who that guy is, you know? And, I, and, uh, and I, I, I go to push the speaker and he comes up and he goes, Tom Kenny. I go, oh, John Hamm, oh, oh my God. He, he, goes, he goes, great to see you again, man. It's so great, it's been a while. I don't remember ever having <laughs> met John Hamm. <laughs> He was like, man, it's been so long. I was like, me too. Yeah, dude. <laughs> you have hair, you're doing all right. <laughs> this is like two days after he won his Emmy. You know, it was like two days after. He won an Emmy on Sunday and we record on Wednesdays, you know, so I was like, uh, so what's new with you? Anything? You know, but it was. <laughs> That's so great. But and he like, was, yeah, play, he was playing a fish um, uh, uh, named Don Grouper. <laughs> oh, this character about awesome. them is Don Draper. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Patrick working at an advertising agency is very good. <laughs> a good Can't wait to see that. Now, so I don't know if you guys are aware of this. There is the impact the show has had is so incredible. And actually, recently, I was just reading this actually last night. A 13-year-old boy. I don't know if you read this. He okay. is in a classroom and a special needs kid, and someone started. I think he had to give the Heimlich to someone, and his teachers asked. You know, how did you know how to do that? And he said, I learned it on Spongebob. <laughs> All right. It's, yeah, it was on the cover I mean, of the, uh, was it the It was the, the, the front news? page of the New York Daily News. So like, oh, uh, really? Sponge, I thought that was like the local. Sponge yeah. Murdoch tabloid pants. <laughs> but, but it's like, uh, <laughs> it was the front page of the Daily News. Somebody sent me that. Actually, not to name drop, but uh, Marky Ramon from the Ramones uh, sent me the, <laughs> no, sent me the picture. I like, oh my God, look at that. This is on the cover of the New York Daily News. <laughs> 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 But then there was a news report, that's a video news report that somebody else sent me that was like on the local, did, did I send you that? Yeah. It was the, the local station, uh, you know, in New York, I guess, New York City, W-O-R or something, and, and uh, it's just so funny, they interview the kid, and the kid is pretty severely autistic. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, the classmate who he saved was not, you know, like I, oh, I, think, right. I think he was right. an autistic kid right. that right. was in a classroom of, of, of <laughs> you know, regular student. And, uh, yeah, it was cool. You can tell he demonstrates on the girl, and she's like, okay, that's enough. You know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it just stop. <laughs> but it was really, it's been, a, it's been a great week for SpongeBob, man. I was a Jeopardy clue on yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That was cool. And, and, extra and who, awesome. who sent me the video clip? <laughs> I had to do that. It's hey, tough. A, text, a, Jeopardy. a text from Bill Fockerbach. I mean, it's like uh, a screenshot of like Bill just filming the TV on his wall. <laughs> And Alex Trebek going, Tom Kenny, not just Spongebob, but also voices Gunter, Magic Man, and Ice King on this other tool. <laughs> and the guy gets it in two seconds. What is it, Magic Time? It's like, wow. 
It was double jeopardy too. It wasn't like a loser first round. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just must feel so amazing to see something like that because you know, obviously, SpongeBob is a hilarious show, but it also does. I mean, it teaches people stuff. It's so interesting. Yeah. I mean, um, if you start choking on an apple. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone here would know how to do it because of you guys. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the most important thing of SpongeBob, because it's not trying to, obviously, we're not trying to be educational and, you know, like a, a movie like SpongeBob, Sponge Out of Water. Uh, uh, Very you know, serious movie. Much, <laughs> so serious. You know, like if we were to ever get on the on the list of best animated feature for the Oscars or whatever, like obviously Inside Out is going to decimate us because it's about a little girl and what's going on inside her and it's so deep and, you know, uh, Sponge Out of Water is just. About the, you know, the, 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 how goofy the, do we get? How goofy and weird and surreal and hot tub time machine can we get with uh, SpongeBob and Patrick? So, uh, but 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 it's got reach. The show's got reach that is just like uh, we never could have foreseen, and it keeps on going. That's the amazing thing. Is like you know, like you as an actor, you're kind of like a migrant. Uh, oh, yeah, farm you're, worker, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's like you go where the crops are and you're like, okay, well, I guess that show's canceled. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe the strawberries are coming in in Santa Barbara, you know, so you, so you go there. You know, it's like grapes of wrath. So, uh, so then, uh, so when something sticks around that long, and you're also kind of mentally preparing yourself, at least I do, Always. for the time when they're going to say, okay, that's enough. Well, that's it. And, uh, you know, so you're like, I'm, I'm not going to be sad, it's been a great run, I'm not going to be churlish, and then something like SpongeBob Out of Water comes and like blows the studio's expectations, financial expectations for it, out of the water, and you're going, wow, this, this thing's going to keep going for a few more years, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like, uh, it's so... Uh, it's it's a blast, you know. It's it's and, and it's nice to still like it. The and, and there's are. there's no cynicism in the studio when we're working. I mean, no. everyone loves loves their characters, loves doing it. I mean, that's so hard to sustain. Uh, it's such a strange alchemy that happens, and, and we, we just stumbled into something awesome. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Because awesome. I mean, it, it's the cartoon world is much more functional than the. Um, um, oh yeah, that, that is not it's ergonomically uh, uh, together. Too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, sexy. <laughs> yeah. Let me slip into something more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the cartoon world is much more functional than the on-camera world, I think. Absolutely. There's it's less so mental illness and uh, insecurity <laughs> and just craziness, you so know. Well, so, uh, especially when you're talking about cable animation, because we're, you know, Nickelodeon, hi! Hi! hi. <laughs> Nickelodeon's like the, the weird little, uh, weird little, uh, like, pet that is kept in the corner of the basement of Viacom, and it's just, just stay down there, just do whatever it is you do, just do that. And so there's, yeah, it, it, there is a simplicity to it. No. There's a freedom that comes, like, like basic cable you know, animation is, like, compared to, like, network shows and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's, there's a freedom that comes with being, living in the ghetto, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, it's like, it's like your neighbors won't complain as much, you know, because they're used to crazy stuff happening. So, so it's like, you know, if you live in Beverly Hills and you have a wild party, everybody's calling the cops, you know what I mean? But if you're in the ghetto and you're having a wild party, people go, just another Saturday night, you know? So it's like, it's soulful, you know, there, there's, a, there's a soulfulness to it. And even now, and, and you know, somebody was asking me yesterday, like, if there was more freedom back in the days when uh, Rocco's Modern Life and those 90s Nicktoons were happening. Mm. And there was a little bit more of like inmates running the asylum feel, you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, like, but I, I can't believe that Heffer just said that, you know? But, uh, but, but even now with, with the, the, the greater oversight from Suits that comes with the, you being on a show with, with characters that make a bazillion dollars uh, in licensing, uh, so there, there are more eyeballs on it, but they, uh, there still is a lot of creative freedom in them just letting the show happen. Like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's not. It's not like the uh, the writers and storyboard artists are getting notes from ten different <laughs> network executives. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you from yesterday.
yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, is, she is the daughter of the kingpin. Yeah. I love it. Good to see you, Jesse. Um, I do want to make sure we have some time for fan questions. So if you guys want to start lining up with the mic, if you do have questions. Oh, yeah, so sorry. Um, Are we blabbing too much? No, not at all. Not, not at all. Hey, see you later, man. Uh, Victor. I'll go into that vibe. Oh, he's going to the mic. Of course, of course. Oh my goodness. Look at that. I thought he was like, I, I, I thought he's, he, like, I'm done he's, he's an aspiring animator, so I thought he was like, you know, cartoon emergency. I gotta get out of here. My peeper just went off. There you go. I know, watch out, man. That wouldn't have been there when you got back because nerds are very shady. It is so not the truth. These, these, these cons are, I mean, this is Bill's kind of first con besides a couple of San Diego's. Yeah, it's my first one doing this stuff. We've just done a couple of things. With oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've done a couple of things at uh, San Diego with uh, Nickelodeon. Uh, the show. Not like this, though. It's, it's I more fun. <laughs> So, yeah, the, the people you, you meet. Put, you pulled it all the way out. We have a technical expert coming up right now. I will go ahead. Hey! Hey! <laughs> That's his secret. Alright, do we want to start over here? Fan question on the side? Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, how do you, so how does Burger Beard know how to talk when, when you talk? Because I mean, it's animated, and you, and you don't, uh, and people don't know how Burger Beard knows when to talk and not. Good question. That is a great question, and. You mean because Burger Beard, that was Antonio Banderas in the Sponge Out of Water movie, do you, you mean how do they put the live action character and the animated cartoon characters together? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Well, first of all, they filmed Antonio Banderas in his pirate costume, you know, doing all this crazy stuff and, you know, driving around in those crazy boats and all that uh, in that scene. And then they add the... They use computers to add the animated characters later, but we add our voices to it after it's already filmed, right? Yeah. They film him, and then we record our voices, and then they animate, the, they make the cartoon and put our voices in the mouths of the cartoon, and then they marry the two things together. And uh, it's a pretty great uh, technological magic trick, isn't it? Uh, when, when he's filming, there, there are actors standing in different places, or they're giving him a place to look. And uh, yeah, they go. Someone is going to be over there. Yeah. Patrick's going to be yeah. over there, uh, Antonio. So there's where to look. You know. That's a great, great question. question. Yeah. And you wrote back to me. What? Is that? what? You wrote who the letter was, and you wrote back to him. Oh. Who did? I did? Oh, thank you. I really try. I really try. And it's good. Like, it, like it piles up. Like, now I've got, like, a, like, a, like a giant, like, Santa Claus stacks in my office just going, I hope I ever have time for this. But, but it's, uh, it's uh, some people have assistants that just write there. Sincerely, Tom Kenny, you know what I mean? You know, but I can't do that. So it's like, uh, uh, thank you. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad I had my stuff together that much. <laughs> All right, want to go to the slide? Um, my question is, if you could have any character come back, who would it be? Good one. Any character come back? I know. <laughs> when Ernest Borgnine, the voice of Mermaid Man, passed away, <laughs> Steve Hillenberg said, I don't want anybody else doing the voice of that character. You know, there are people that could imitate it, they call it a voice match. And uh, Steve said, just not the same. So, uh, really, if I could have any character come back, it would be Mermaid Man. And uh, if that would mean we can have Ernest Borgnine back, yeah, uh, that would be even better. <laughs> yeah. Love you, Ernie. <laughs> Love that guy. Yeah. Want to go on the side? We'll just go back and forth. Did you have fun making uh, the movie Sponge Out of Water? I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, it was a blast. It was, it was fun. The difference between doing the, the, the show and the movie is that uh, 
It took forever! <laughs> well, com compared to the giddy up, uh, go, like, pace of, like, uh, cable animation where it's like, you know, once the show's in production, stuff has to happen fast and you don't have time to do a lot of tinkering and revisiting of stuff. It's like, sorry, it already went off to Korea to be animated, you know what I mean, or whatever, so, you know, oh, I just we thought do, of a better joke too we late. Do, we do an 11 minute episode in an afternoon. You know, and then we get to like maybe like touch it up a little bit when after it comes back, like the sister from Korea. But with the movies, you try and work on this one scene for six weeks or something. Yeah, you come in and you're saying the same five lines over and over, and they'll change one word. It, you would never have that kind of luxury on the show where it's just like uh, you know, it's like uh, Lucille Ball on the conveyor belt. You know what I mean? Trying to get the talk and keep up with it. You know? <laughs> so, so that was the main difference. But it, but they're both really fun in 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 their own ways. You know, there there's uh, it's it's all good. They're, I can't think of any unpleasant aspects. <laughs> I wish I had better dirt to give you guys. Like I mean, it. Wait, I had to ask follow up a little on that. It took eleven years to get another movie. So are we gonna have to wait another eleven years to get no, another? No, no, no. They're they're working on a third movie right now. Yes, the script is being written, but Steve Hillenberg does not do anything before he is ready. Uh, Nickelodeon was begging him for a movie for years because the first movie did very well. Yeah, it did. But it's funny that in that eleven years, you gotta think like in terms of like so much has changed in terms of like how movies are shown, marketed, you know, Netflix, all that stuff like wasn't around right. and you know when we did that first movie it's such a different world now and Spongebob is so much more global uh, than it was when that first movie came out. Right. You know, it's hard to find a country that doesn't have Spongebob in it now and so it's a whole different ball game and I think Steve was smart to wait, you know, really what he, his real rationale was, I just haven't thought of a story that warrants that bigger arena. Uh -huh. And you know what I mean? And, they, and it would drive them crazy. They're like, like you know, they just want to do a movie. And he's going, ah, yeah, 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 it's, it's got to be right. You know? Paramount had a new CEO, and he was really, I forget his name. I should know this stuff, but I never do. <laughs> uh, but he was very excited about doing a new film. So I think that kind of. Uh, that, that was a catalyst. Yeah, nice. so, so I think now they're, they're the fire, you know, and, and I know, uh, you know, they, they're, they're starting to write the script, or probably beyond starting writing the script for, for the follow-up to it, and, and uh, they want it to be it's very different from the last movie, so they're kind of looking at different uh, styles of animation and yeah. stuff like that that will make it different and sometimes movie studios they, they don't want anything different they go no we want chip wrecked you know uh, chip one's free you know just give us just give us one that's like the other two and hillenberg and and paul tibbet don't think that way like they're, they're very artistic they're more artistic than, than that so so you know which kind of is uh uh that kind of thinking is just uh suits don't understand it yeah. That's so exciting. We are so excited. I want another movie so bad. So I was like, I have to ask. I have to ask. I know you guys were wondering too. Let's go back over on this side. Um, is there anything you liked more about the first movie more than the second movie? Is, oh. there, is there anything <laughs> what about it? You liked better about oh. the first movie, yeah? Great question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the first movie didn't take as long. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. You know, I can honestly say it's, it's, it sounds like a lame answer, but I, it's totally straight up. I, I, I like both those movies equally. Like, like I, I really dig them both. You know, and the the first one was fun because it was the first movie, and yeah. you know they, yeah. you know they, you know they couldn't afford much CGI, so they really had to build like a giant David Hasselhoff's back <laughs> that they towed through the water, you know what I mean? I remember I showed up at the set and a guy was like, a guy, a guy was like gluing like back hair, hair by hair, onto like a fake David Hasselhoff back. And I was like, well, this is the greatest job in the world. You know I mean? It's like, I'm so glad that bad. I go, what would I be, if I wasn't doing this, what would I be doing? I'd like, you know, I'd be telling somebody the day's specials. <laughs> I, I have no plan B. I have no plan B. <laughs> of course, of course. Good question. Do you want to go back on the side? Uh, hi, um, my name is Alyssa, my son Philip. We met you first at uh, New York Comic Con last year and we talked with you on Friday. You said come up with a question. I did! So I've got the comment, he has the matching question. My comment is that we've noticed there is a similarity between you and Spongebob. You, your personality comes out, your, your smile comes out. It's when I first saw you, it's like, yeah, we know that looks like Spongebob. So, <laughs> that sounds terrifying. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not a stretch to, to, to believe got, you guys. He's got the matching question. 
question is, um, when originally the designs were developed all those years ago, if like they matched the designs to your voices, or if you came up with a voice to the design, like which came first? Did they, they animate you? I hear you. You mean, was there any of me or Bill like incorporated in the designs? No, you know, the, the designs were, were, were done already, and, and Steve Hillenberg had, had uh, kind of dabbled uh, in oceanography and was, uh, was a docent at like this, uh, you know, this Oceanic Institute, like down by San Diego, uh, where he was like a counselor for kids, and he made a comic book, this is before he was in animation, you know, he, he made a, a comic book called The Intertidal Zone, about care about critters that you find in tide pools, and it was kind of scientifically based. But there was a starfish and a sponge and things like that. Sea star. Sea star. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Something's all fancy. <laughs> fancy living. But but it's uh, you know, so uh, those characters kind of grew out of that. And, and I I have the original uh, character designs that Steve showed me back when the show was Sponge Boy. Uh, and uh, yeah, and and. Uh, they look they, they look a little bit different, you know, the way that like Simpsons look kind of different in the first season or whatever. But but it's uh, it's Squidward definitely them. Really but it's definitely. Did he what? know you when he drew it? Did he have you in mind for the? Voice? You know, I don't think so because it kind of predated me. But when it came time to cast the voices, I think he was. Uh, you know, I think he saw something of what me. What about your so glasses? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, they did, they, they did, they did. But especially when I wore uh, the Buddy Holly Ray Bands more, they, they, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they made my glasses like SpongeBob's jellyfishing goggles. You know what I mean? That, and that came from the animators just who can't stop drawing. You know, it's like an OCD thing. Like those guys, will, those guys will be sitting there like talking on the phone or something and like doing the most beautiful, detailed cross hatching sketch you've ever seen. It's it's unbelievable. And they, you know, and they would just, you know, they'll just draw like SpongeBob with my glasses on or or you know, uh, uh, some kinds of characters. Uh, Squid, doing things Squidward they do rides a recumbent bicycle because Roger Bumpus rides a recumbent bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> so occasionally a personal thing will creep into. Yes, yes, Roger Bumpus, the guy that plays Squidward, really does have one of those crazy low to the ground, uh, you know, <laughs> egg beater bicycles that he rides around Burbank. And, 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 and you next thing we know, here's Squidward on the show going, hey, Spider-Bob, you know what I mean? It was like, and so, so we they know this because us. Roger will sometimes wear a shirt that has a picture of himself <laughs> on his recumbent bicycle. So funny. So, you know in the first Spongebob movie where Patrick shows up wearing those fishnet stockings? You know, that's something Bill enjoys that they incorporated. <laughs> I was just feeling it once. Did you or I just, did you, the laugh of Spongebob also come from them or come from you? That totally came from me. That was like Steve, um, Spongebob is the only show that I'm on where I was involved in it before it was a show, you know, where Hillenburg who I knew from Rocco's Modern Life, you know, it was his first job in the business, my first job in the business. Guys like Derek Dryman and, uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, all, all these guys. Uh, 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 Nick Jennings, who now runs, you know, was, was on Adventure Time for a long time, and I was re helping on the Powerpuff Girls reboot. You know, all these guys that went on to a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, Rocco's Modern Life was like our incubator, you know, and, uh, 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 what was the question? The lab. Yeah. <laughs> so Steve, Steve had me come in before SpongeBob was in the. It was just in the pitch stage, you know. And he said, "What do you think of this? You know, is this stupid?" And I said, "It's yes, yes, it is, and it's awesome, you know. And uh, it's stupid and awesome. It's awesome." And you know, we just were talking about what would this guy sound like, what would this guy talk like, and then the laugh was kind of kind of came from just kind of thinking about it and going, "What would you know? Sea, ocean." Porpoise, dolphin, seagull. You know, so it was like, you know, so it was like, ah, so it was like half seagull and half dolphin. You know, like, 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 like just kind of putting sounds together. And Steve was like, "That's it, Eureka!" You know, it was amazing. We love it. Came together. All right, what side are we on now? This side. Go ahead. Um, so this is a, so this, so this is probably a common question, but uh, what was your favorite episode to walk on? Favorite episode. Favorite episode. Uh, well, you know, well, the, the, the the pilot is my favorite episode just because it was it was just the uh, introduction uh, to the very special world. You know, when we did that pilot. The, that's the help wanted help episode. Wanted. And Tiny Tim's on. Yeah, and <laughs> with the anchovies, and they come in and they're hungry. We had a helium tank. 
<laughs> in, in the studio, which I had never encountered before. <laughs> but I thought, well, this is a very unique uh, kind of project. Uh, but it was... Yeah, huffing on helium and doing a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hope this show goes to series. <laughs> no, no, no. Just huffing like Dennis Hopper in Blue Velvet. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> but uh, really loved the, the pilot that was all my favorite. Oh. Yeah, that was fun because that was the first time we all got to be in the same room doing those characters and there really was a feeling of like, I don't know if this is going to be a show or not, but it's, it, I know it's going to be an awesome seven minute cartoon <laughs> that uh, is going to have a shelf, you know, people are going to be, if it doesn't go to series, people will it. rediscover the seven minute cartoon in 20 years and go, <laughs> wow, that was great, you know, there's just a feeling of, 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 of just excitement to it, you know, Absolutely. and, uh, you know, I love, uh, as I get older and crankier, I tend to identify more with Squidward, <laughs> you know, like, I go, hey, he's right, they should leave him alone, you know, <laughs> listen to the squid, you know, but, but, uh, so I like, uh, episodes where Squidward is tortured are, uh, by them are, like, my favorite episodes where they're just being irritating, I love episodes like Idiot Box, where, you know, the fact that, the fact that they have so much imagination and Squidward has is incapable of imagine, imagining and it makes Squidward mad because he wants what they have but he can't achieve it. Like, I, I think there's deep stuff there. And even, you know, stuff like the magic conch shell, like what it says about what it says about magical thinking and religion and all this stuff, I think is, is like on a, a, a deeper level, you know? And, uh, and I love, I love uh, band geeks, you know, where the Squidward's trying to have... Uh, that's a popular one. The best Patrick line ever. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go over to this side, to this side. Lovely pink hair. Hi, um, I was wondering, are there any episodes of Spongebob where you're laughing so hard recording the lines that you have to do it over again? <laughs> That's a great question. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, pretty much every recording, and, and pretty much not just Spongebob, like, I mean, Adventure Time or whatever, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, uh -huh. John DiMaggio does the best fake farts in the <laughs> So you'll just be getting ready to do your line when he plays Jake the dog, you know? So he'll, uh, you know, he'll just like, you'll just be ready to start your line, big long speech of the Ice King, he'll just come up here and go. Yeah. <laughs> but way better than that, and then you're like, suddenly it's second grade, but, but in uh, Spongebob, uh, we're cracking up all the time. All the time, people will surprise you with what they do. Clancy Brown will do something really crazy with the line for Mr. Krabs. Or Roger from Squidward, or yeah. Or, or, or. One we <laughs> go. Uh, one really recent, recent time where this happened was a couple of weeks ago when uh, the Nickelodeon suits were giving somebody a tour. I think it was the network censors. Uh, 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 a couple of the people, right? And uh, they, they just, hey, here's our recording studio. And they, and, uh, this, uh, you know. When responsible adults are standing there looking at you, like stuff that like shouldn't be a double entendre, something they become. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this? <laughs> so, so they came in and, and they brought the tour, and it's all these really serious people. And uh, uh, it's an episode where uh, coming up where uh, Sandy, uh, uh, her tree uh, grows too many walnuts, and then and she over harvests. You know, she doesn't do sustainable farming, and then this character called the Shalman who's like a shaman, but he's a salmon, too. <laughs> uh, played, by Sir, played by Sir Graham Greene, the Canadian awesome. uh, 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 you know, actor, native actor. And he, uh, he was great. But they just happened to walk in while I was doing the line, which I hadn't even thought about. Well, it was, uh, you know, oh, oh, those aren't my nuts on the ground. They belong to my friend Sandy. <laughs> Who are these nuts on your head? Those are my nuts. Those are Sandy's. <laughs> Suddenly, we're all my nuts. Oh my god, tears. <laughs> and they hustled the tour out of there. I'm like, okay, and that's, like, that's how we record the cartoons. It's like, that just happened. <laughs> they happened to walk in right on that line. And I wasn't even thinking of it as being uh, this or that, you know? It was, like, it was just exposition. You know? Every line after that seemed, that seemed to have the word nuts in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, it all went south. So that was uh, that, that was the, that was a basically an unscheduled half hour break. That we had. <laughs> <laughs> that so great. Back over on the side. Uh, 
uh, sorry, I, I was trying to fix it uh, with, uh, with my mom, uh, with my mom's cell phone, which I'm using it for today, which I was having a bit of difficulty because all of this sign it, I can't say. But uh, anyway, uh, I bear might as well ditched it. And uh, I got a quite, uh, uh, I got a request, uh, two things. Uh, one, a request, and uh, a what, and, and a question. Uh, anyway, uh, Mr. Kenny? Yes, sir. You better do uh, a dog's voice, which you haven't do used in the longest time, but, and everyone, brace yourselves. Uh, I'm, I'm a broadcaster at Cape Cod Community College by my DJ named uh, DJ Mixer. Anyway, here it goes. Uh, now, Mr. Kenny, please uh, listen to this real carefully. <coughs> 90.7 WKKL, the commercial freeze alternative. At West Park's boat, hi, Ennis. My name is DJ Mixer, and I'll be your host for the next half hour. Okay, Mr. Kenny, here you go. Uh, wow, that was great. Just your introduction alone was a half hour, so I think we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> That was great, man. I, I love people with great natural voices, you know? It's like, if, 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 if I always said, like, people go, wow, you do so many voices, and I go, wow, if I had one great voice, I wouldn't have to, you know what I mean? It's, if, 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 I was, if I was the inner world guy, you know? But, you know, you know? If you were James Earl Jones. summer, they would never forget, you know? If I was one of those guys, you know, that, that would be awesome. But, but uh, yeah, good luck, man. You got a great voice. Why, why, thank you, Mr. Kenny, and now I'll be on my way now. I'm blessed that you may know what's coming for. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I love it. Good job. <laughs> we'll go over to this side. Uh, uh, this is a question for Tom Kenny. What was your favorite line to do either out of um, Adventure Time, SpongeBob, or Wonder of Yonder? Pick one and can you repeat it? Favorite favorite line from any of from one of those three? Yes. Adventure Time, SpongeBob, Wander Over Yonder? Yes. Um, I love them all, but uh, Ice King, you know, he's such a great character to play, like kind of kind of like funny and tragic at the same time. So uh, I say something that's really uh, one thing that people always want to hear me say is the Ice King. Uh, right in the boing loins. They got it right in the boing loins. The boing loins. Right in the boing loins. You like that one too? All right. That, that joke hit you right in the boing loins. I love it. Cool. Thank you, baby. I'll see you. <laughs> Thank you. I go around the side. Um, how many days does it take to record an episode, like with the voices? Wow, nice mic technique too. I can hear you so clearly. Uh, how many days does it take to record the voices? We do an episode in an afternoon, and then of recording. There's months of work that go into the writing and the developing and the story and the storyboard and all that stuff. So that all happens before we, we get the fun part. And, uh, and then when they send that all to the animation company in Seoul, Korea, it comes back and sometimes they bring us back in and say, well, we need to change this line and we have blah, blah, blah. And we kind of yeah, but it. SpongeBob's them out. Did I do? Sorry, <laughs> I hate technology so much. I, I, I want to be Amish. But, uh, it was, uh, I'm gonna churn my own butter. It, it was, <laughs> I think like technology hates butter. me. Technology hates technology. Fired the first shot, you know. But uh, yeah, it's there's so much work that has to be done. Like Boo was saying before we record, then we come in and record, and it's fun and creative. But it's also some work, you know. You're, you're finessing jokes and things. And then a bunch of stuff has to happen after we record, you know, music, sound effects, all that stuff. So it's a, it's a long process. It takes about nine months, uh, you know, in, in all, maybe more. How early do you get the scripts? Like, you know what's going to happen in the upcoming episodes? A day or two before. Okay. Uh, so if you're getting killed, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, luckily, we you know we're not going to, it's not like being on Walking Dead, where it's like, I hope I survive this week. <laughs> no, that's the end of me. Do you get them sooner since you're directing them? Uh, maybe a day or two sooner, but uh, for me, I, I don't like to look at it too far before the session, because you forget everything. So, uh, yeah, we, you know, we, we read the storyboards, and like, like you were kind of alluding to this earlier, like, uh, once in a while they don't have a storyboard ready, they try to do it from storyboards, but if sometimes they'll just they'll go, we don't have time to do a storyboard, here's a dialogue script, and they'll give you that, but 
but we've been doing it long enough now that we can kind of visualize what the storyboard will will be when they do one. Yeah, right. You know, you've got to kind of posit what it's going to be. So, um, yeah, we, we usually look at it. Um, I usually look at it a day or two ahead of time, and you know, circle everything. You know, practice my off the cuff ad libs that I'm going to do in two days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, I think we have time for a few more. Let's go on the side. Hi. Ah, my leg. Um, I have a question and a request. <laughs> um, my question is, um, I know you mentioned one of the weirdest things you've seen uh, doing Spongebob, but what is one of the funniest, like, laugh out about things that you've seen that, like, it's kind of like a memory you always keep, like you shared it at parties or something like that? Uh, in terms of, like, Spongebob merchandise? Or oh, like... just, in, just in general, like, something funny you saw that was, like, relating to Spongebob that was so funny that you just had to share it with everybody. Someone brought it back to, uh, gave me, they went to the, the South Pacific and they brought back from some island, someone had used some sea star, a la the first movie, remember when they were uh, 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 a sea star, and they, they painted Patrick shorts on the sea star and put googly eyes, and then stuck a kitchen sponge, a yellow kitchen sponge, to one point and put googly eyes on the yellow sponge. And, <laughs> And it was a Christmas decoration, so I <laughs> still have that. Some, some sicko Michael's craft store. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or Fiji or something. Too. It's uh, yeah. I got for me like uh, I don't know if it was like laugh out loud funny, but like just in terms of thrilling, like like wow, you know, like this is what I this kind of stuff you dream about when you're a little kid. Uh, was like being a balloon in the Macy's parade. You know what I mean? Where you're like, wow, I do the voice for that giant thing that's like flying over New York City, you know? That, that, that's, that's like, that stuff still is like, when it happens, you just go, wow, you know, what, what is this, you know? What is this, what is this life, you know? It's, it's, uh, I shouldn't be having this good of a time. Like, I, I can't believe I've been able to keep the, the, the long con going for so long. You know, I, can, I can wait to get caught, you know? It's like, you know, you know like a Bernie Madoff or something. <laughs> I also had a request. Oh, sure. sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask Mr. Bill. I'm um, not really sure where I am right now. What is, is this the Krusty Krab? No, this is Pat. <laughs> Stephen Hillenberg is uh, is involved again with our with our TV production, and we've been doing new episodes since last December, I think, after the movie was finished. Yeah, and it's you know whether SpongeBob continues or not isn't really up to us. You know, it's this giant corporate behemoth that makes those decisions, and then we're kind of pilot fish that are along for the ride. And we're glad to keep working because we got like kids and houses and stuff. So you know, I, I think. Um, you know, uh, like we said yesterday, uh, we had this conversation yesterday, is, uh, you know, I think in terms of going downhill, I think like, you know, it's hard to be on a show that, that's been around for so long because those first couple of seasons when all things are possible and, and you're conquering the world, there's nothing like it. And then when it becomes uh, a Simpsons or a SpongeBob or something like that, then it's just, and it's been around for a long time, you're just trying to keep the quality and keep the magic going as best as you can. Yeah, but, uh, yeah believe me, we, we do everything we can to protect the spirit of our characters and stories as much as we can. 
And, and it, it, there's an ebb and flow. Anything that is in production for a long time, there is an ebb and flow that's going to happen. Amazing. Let's go over here. We have a couple more. Um, hi, Bill. Hi, Tom. Um, I'm just going to say really quick, this is like my favorite show of all time, and I'm kind of nervous about talking again. But, like, yeah. um, I have like a few really quick things. Um, one is, can both of you in your voices say hi to a kid named Justin? Justin? Yeah. Sure. And, and by the way, don't be nervous. We're total dorks. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see us try to sit down? <laughs> Uh, Justin, it's Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, you can zoom in so I don't look like a flea circus. But, uh, uh, we just wanted to, uh, not just us, not just me. I don't want to just say hi to Justin. I also want Patrick to say hello to Justin. Hi, Justin. This is me over here. Justin, look, over here. This is me over here. See me? This is me. Hi, Justin. Sorry, I'm not wearing pink. In fact, Justin, not just is going to say hi, Justin, on the count of three. One, two, three. Hi, Justin! <laughs> <laughs> Feel like Howard. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so nice. I, yeah, I have a few quick things. Uh, Patrick, uh, can you please say the line where the giant wrench drops on your head? Where the who what now? The when Doodle Bob drops the giant wrench on your head. The line that you said. I can't remember that line. <laughs> where's the leak man? Where's, where's, where's the, the leak? Where's the leak man? Oh! Where's the leak man? <laughs> um, also, I had a request from my friend. I know you already said it. Can you say uh, the mayonnaise line again? Oh, sorry. The mayonnaise line. Okay, okay, this is for Justin, okay. <laughs> is mayonnaise an instrument, Justin? Well, is it? Yeah! I keep asking. Yeah. Um, my question is, do you guys have a favorite song that you did in the show? Look, any of the songs that were featured in any of the show? Next week, we're here, next week, we're here, next week. There's so many good songs. At the risk of seeming immodest. Uh, I have to say the song I wrote. The best day ever. Yeah. <laughs> I that time. It's like SpongeBob's philosophy. You wrote that song. It is. It's a, it's a philosophy in a, in a song, you know, like SpongeBob's worldview. Trying to be like the Loving Spoonful or John Sebastian or something like that. You know? It's totally stealing from all old things. All right, guys. We have to wrap up. Of course, they will be here at their table the rest of the day, so you guys can go over and say hello. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. We're sitting there, man. Yes. So. Yes, Thank we're you nice. So Thank, you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, guys. Thank you for coming out. Hope it was informative and somewhat funny for you all. Thanks so much.